I'm really excited to be here today to talk about tomorrow. Um, not really tomorrow, tomorrow, but the future, um, which is a lot about you know, what this event is about. But in order to do that, I'm going to go back in time a little bit um, to the World's Fair. Yes, the World's Fair, the ultimate exploration of a disruptive technology for a better tomorrow. The World's Fair went through a couple of interesting iterations. Um, it started with industrialization when the new t technology of the day was electricity, um, then went through sort of a cultural exchange era where the world became much smaller through things like television and radio, where the World's Fair was much more about you know, sharing cultural exchange and how people did things differently around the world. Then now, uh, they're called Expos, the last one happening in Shanghai, focused more on national branding and pride. But I think the reason I'm talking about the World's Fair is that it offers a really interesting exploration into the relevance of thinking about the future. Um, and to do that, uh, there's a particular case study that happened much closer to home here uh, in the United States, in New York. It started back in 1935, right? Smack in the height of the Great Depression. Joblessness running rampant, poverty across the nation, um, thanks to you know, the, the banks collapsing, exacerbated by the Dust Bowl, and yet, right in 1935, five retired police officers were plotting <laughs> a giant expo to lift both New York City and the nation out of the Great Depression to inspire a better sense of what the future could hold. Four years later, we have the 1939 New York World's Fair. The theme of the fair was the dawn of a new day, very much focused on uh, the building of the world of tomorrow. Like today, uh, the fair would exhibit the most promising developments of ideas, products, services, and social factors of the present day in a fashion where people would think about how we could create a better future from those. Um, because at that time, in 35, despite the world seeming like it was collapsing, there were actually really amazing technologies being developed. The very first binary computer, the first television, radio, and the fair sort of served as this place where we could make all of that relevant for people. The first time people saw interconnected highway systems, and they were really grand exhibitions that were out. Uh, this is sort of the Futurama ride uh, presented by GM on the future of transportation, um, to create a sense of wonder for people to explain sort of, again, the relevance of this new technology on what uh, it meant for people's day-to-day -day lives. What did computers mean to us, really? Um, so fast forward from 1939 to 2012 now. I think things are obviously very different, but there are some interesting parallels. Um, obviously, uh, rising unemployment, uh, political unrest, rising uh, financial collapse, and so with all these parallels, I started wondering, what would the World's Fair look like in 2012? There are still these expos, but sort of this sense of what the future would look like. And I don't really think that it would be focused on industrialization or cultural exchange or even national branding, which is sort of the phase that we're supposed to be in now. Um, I think, in fact, that it might actually look at solving some of the problems that emerged from uh, what came of those eras, over consumption, et cetera, looking at solutions to major social problems, a lot like um, the technologies that you've sort of seen and heard about today and tonight. I kind of argue that if the World's Fair were to happen today, that it would be focused around social innovation. I know I'm a little bit, um, you know, biased because I sort of live and breathe this every day. Um, I always, you know, I think like a lot of the people here tonight, sort of look for the new innovations that are going to make healthcare better, how to get education to uh, people and more access. And I think it creates a really positive and optimistic sense for people like us in the room. But for the wider public uh, outside, there isn't really an opportunity to engage with this kind of innovation, uh, to really participate, as Clay Shirky says, not to just consume, um, but to create, co-create the sense of what a better future would look like. And so um, I'm kind of really interested in bringing back this sense of the world's fair. It's sort of something that I'm working on through um, the Social Innovation Week that I'm creating, uh, but looking at getting innovators together to really re-envision what a better future might look like, what the relevance of the technologies that we've been hearing about mean for the day-to-day -day person, to be able to create spaces that people off the street can really walk into um, and experience this innovation for themselves and what it means to the to the relevance of their lives, um, to explore what the future might look like now. 
the reason I'm so interested in it is because what was amazing about the World's Fair was that it really got people together to will into being not only steel and glass and gigantic structures that still exist today, but more than that, really a sense of what a better future could look like, one that might last even longer than those steel structures, because they are affecting our sense today of what we envision the future to be like, what we dream about, what we consume, and how that's designed. And I think that we now have a very rare opportunity to completely redesign that sense of the future um, through this innovation, through people like we've heard from today, who are um, here, who are the creators um, of the materials, ideas, and forces at work in our world, the tools with which the world of tomorrow must be made, as this um, sort of mission statement from the 1939 fair set out. Um, so, I think that, like Clay mentioned, um, it's not a top-down process, but now more than ever, one that's to be created by people like those who have presented, people like you um, out in the audience, because we are probably closer than anyone in the world to what that future might look like. Thank you.